professor uh, shall we start professor okay. ah yes a very good morning to one and all here we are for the aict iist sponsored refresher induction program on value based education system current and future scenario we are on day two, session one. The session is going to be handled by Dr. Ellis Ganesh. He's a retired professor from IIT Madras. He's going to address on universal human values. Now I request Dr. R. Murugan, professor from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Panimal Institute of Technology, to introduce the guest for us. Okay. Thank you, Amos. Uh, it's my honor to introduce uh, our Professor L.S. Ganesh to these uh, participants. L.S. Ganesh, also known as L.S.G., retired in July 2020 as a professor in the Department of Management Studies of Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. He has over three decades of academic experience involving teaching, research, and intellectual services. His academic interests span the areas of systems thinking and applications, systems modeling and analysis, data and decision analysis, institutional planning and development, social entrepreneurship and project management, technology management, knowledge management, and public systems management. Earlier, he served as an associate fellow in the educational planning unit of the National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration at New Delhi, and then as an assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. He has served as a visiting professor at the University of Pashu in Germany, the Institute, the Indian Institute of Management at Bangalore uh, and Kolikot, the Indian School of Ma Business and at Hyderabad, the National Institute of Technology at Trichy, and other national level and sub-regional institutions. Given his continuing passion for research, he has published over 80 research papers in top-rated academic journals, and these are cited often, earning him significant and acclaim globally and nationally. He is highly respected and rated by his peers as one of the top researcher in India in the field of management. He is widely admired by his students, peers, and audiences as one of the most inspiring teachers and orators whose clarity of thought and communication is exemplary and whose insights and messages are transformational. International organizations such as the World Bank and the UNDP and the national level institutions and organizations such as the MHRD AACTE, NBA, ISRO, CII, FICCI, and MMA have utilized his expertise and services in some of their projects, programs, and events. He has lead executive development and continuing education programs for the most reputed multinational and national level organizations and has delivered keynotes, seminars, and lectures to a wide variety of audience ranging from business industry leaders and the professionals through scientists to school children. He has made significant contribution to the growth and development of IIT Madras and his department. The noteworthy ones include the launch and development of the MBA program, establishment of strategic relationships through MOUs with the international and national level institutions and the organizations. The reinvention, revival, and the relaunch of the unique MS program, MS research program, the promotion and incubation of student lead startups, entrepreneur ventures, then the formulation of the IIT Madras perspective plan in 1991 and a strategic plan in 2001, and the contribution to the second strategic plan in 2014. 
he has served several offices in his institute including those of warden advisor for cultural activity advisor for office of alumni affairs professor in charge of human resource development professor in charge of the cell for the professional ethics and human values and the professor in charge of the cell for technology innovation development and entrepreneurship support which is now the e cell of iit madras he served as the dean of students of the institute during 2011 to 14 He has held a key position in professional bodies such as the Project Management Institute, India, Society of Operations Management, and the Product Development and Management Association, India. Professor L S G has been offered many awards, honors, and much professional recognition, which includes the Distinguished Alumnus Award by the Bit Spilani Alumni Association. Delhi chapter in the year 2007 the IIT Madras Alumni Association award for distinguished services in 2015 the prestigious distinguished fellow award by the project management institute india in in the year 2017 the distinguished professor award by the computer society of india mumbai in 2017 the status of visiting professor and mentor in residence at the indian institute of management at bangalore in the year 2020 the status of professor professor of eminence at the anna university in chennai in year 2020 and the status of member of the syndicate at periyar university in salem in the year 2020 he is now a member of the board of governors of the indian institute of management at trichy a member of the board of governors of the Indian Institute of Technology at Palakkad, a nominee of the President of India to the Faculty Selection Committees of the National Institute of Technology (NITs), located in different states and the Union territories of India, and the Chairperson Board of Governors, Government Engineering College, Kolikot. LSG is an accomplished rock, blues, and jazz vocalist and rhythm guitarist. He loves work. music philosophy and dreaming so it is our pleasure to welcome you sir for this forum uh, i hand over the session to professor uh, ls ganeshan thank you professor murugan and thank you almost and uh, let me thank the institution for having uh, invited me to uh, share some of my uh, knowledge and experiences concerning the human values because you've added the adjective of universal uh, that has certain assumptions that uh, go with it because uh, when we look at the universe uh, we still don't have evidence that there are other species or other intelligent species in other parts of the universe and uh, leave alone species we obviously cannot be sure that there are human beings elsewhere sometimes uh, is my am i audible please because i yes sir I'm yes sir a message order. from yes, i'm getting sir. a message yes, yes, sir. yeah i'm yes, getting please. a message from one of the participants that uh, she's not able to hear that's why okay good thank you uh, it's uh, loud good and morning. clear sir good morning sir. yeah yeah i think uh, amos's advice is correct always um You know, in Tamil there is a saying, "Adi vada vada vara mari ananda be gora vada matta." You know, what's the meaning? Is for everybody. <laughs> It's a, almost what you gave now was what is called as brute force method of getting back. You know, just get out of Google, come back again, and and join the stream. Uh, that's correct advice. In fact, it happened to me yesterday in a meeting. It was a Webex meeting for a doctoral scholar. and uh, there was a problem with my audio and uh, later i found that i could not even share, upload my uh, inputs in the meeting there, there was some error coming on the screen anyway that apart so are we sure that there are other species in the universe we don't know even if there are other species can we be confident that they'll be human well i'm not sure at all 
I'm not sure at all for a different reason. I was about to say that. Um, let us ask a very direct and very personal question to all of us. And you don't need to answer publicly because you have to answer yourself. I can answer it for myself. Okay. How many of us can touch our hearts and conscience and say we are truly human? I'm not so sure. I'm sure every one of us has slipped sometime or the other. That includes me. I'm not a saint. I mean, some people may wish to call me a self-appointed saint. I mean, nobody can appoint themselves a saint. Others have to appoint somebody else a saint. I'm not a self-appointed saint. I'm not a saint. Am I Am I a Satan's assistant? No, I'm not a Satan's assistant either. You know? I am probably a very simple, ordinary, typical, common human being who is subject to the pulls and pressures of normal life around us. But are there values that are special to us as creatures? Let us not forget that we are creatures. You know? what, however much somebody may not like to use the term. The fact and the truth is we are creatures. We are one among millions of creatures. Except that we observe that there is something very different about this creature we call the human being. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm not going to dive into those differences. All of you would be aware of major differences between us as creatures and all other creation. Okay. In all the kingdoms, you know, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and so on. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the special aspect of values that human beings should possess. Universal, because uh, here I would restrict the term universal, not in terms of space, but perhaps refer more to time. Something that stands the test of time. And I'm sure all of you know of these values. But before diving into those values, and uh, getting into uh, a good discussion, let me also uh, plead with all of you that please do. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you, Professor Morgan. I'm a person who generally avoids slides. You know, I do recall a piece of humor which one of my friends shared in Coimbatore many years ago, and I think he was right. Not not that I. I have never used slides. I've used slides very rarely, very rarely. You know? And I try to avoid them. What my friend shared with me was that PowerPoint is used by people who neither have power nor point. So that was the <laughs> that was the sharing. I think he was perhaps right. Because I have come across teachers who, who just put the PowerPoint slides and press down, 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 or revisit if required. And the learning is lost. Now, that is a very important aspect that we as teachers should consider. Why is this important? It's important because of another human value, which uh, comes from a process that we call education. All education leads to the formation of competencies or development of competencies and formation of character. So there are two C's that are outcomes of education, competence and character. So today our focus is on the second, the character part. And this is important because a lot of human values are embedded in one's character. Competencies pertain to what we can call as knowledge and skills. Knowledge is what you know and what you can uh, skills refers to what you can do. Okay. So that is what we call as competence. Now, character is, is reflected by one's external behavior, revealed consistent external behavior, not one-off behavior, because I'm sure there are moments that we, that we are saints and there are moments that we are devils also. You know, both are true. Both are true. Then we come to this aspect of character. What else? Revealed, consistent, or what we can call in engineering as 
uh, if we can use the term steady state behavior, you know, steady state behavior, what do you ordinarily do? Then the habits that we display, the values that guide our behavior. So our focus is particularly on the values that guide our behavior. So that is character. Okay? Sometimes people also refer to character as meta competence. That means competence to use competence. So that is referred to as meta competence. Okay. So how many of us can show the competence to use competence in different situations? Okay. Now this is very important. I'll give you a striking example to begin with. It's a very horrifying example. And it's a true example because something that was uh, shared on TV a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago. It was very sad. The news item takes us to the town of Vishakhapatnam, in which in the morning at 11 o'clock, by the way, this was shared by all channels, and it is a shame on our country, actually. I'm sharing this because it reveals character, okay, or the lack of it. That is why I even started off saying I'm sure I'm not sure how many of us are truly human in that sense, you know, who will uphold all human values. And that includes me. I'm, I'm repeating this. It's not that I am an exception. No, I am not an exception. I'm a simple, ordinary human being, like many of you are, you know. It's just that a very important value has to come to us, which I will talk about. And that value is called the value of struggle, you know, the value of struggle with ourselves. Okay, that is important. Now, what had happened in Vishakhapatnam? 11 o'clock in the morning on a particular day, and this news item was telecast on all the major channels, including Tamil channels. Okay, you can check this. It's about three or four years ago. A lady was raped on a platform across, uh, uh, alongside a road. 11 o'clock in the morning. And the video came because an auto driver stopped to film the rape on his mobile phone. My dear friends, where is character? I don't understand this at all. I don't understand this. It's a blot on our country uh, as a whole. If anybody sees, I mean, what would you call such people? Was the rapist better or the auto driver better? I'm, I'm asking this question. To me, the auto driver is actually Satan. <laughs> Instead of stopping. The rascal is filming the rape and, and making money out of it by sending it to the channels. Where do we go? Please tell me, where do we go this way? And there's no end to this. In fact, one of the dominant characters in India, which I'm also subject to, is that uh, somewhere in our subconscious mind, deep inside, in such a location that we are unable to discern what's happening, our respect for women is questionable it's questionable okay how much do we respect our women this is also a part of human values what is the point of worshipping ardhanari shura or shiva and shakti and coming back and beating your wife at home or ill treating your wife at home this doesn't make any sense at all i don't know what values you are talking about okay now one may escape by giving an excuse by saying that, no, she irritated me, no end. And that is why I had to use the ultimate weapon of my hand and slap her a few times. Well, that's only partially, uh, you know, valid. That's all. There is a karma for that. We'll get back to the aspect of character and values. I just revealed one example of what happened in Vishakhapatna to showcase the tragedy that we are all dwelling in. Character is at a loss. Today, even if somebody asks for drinking water, others look suspiciously. That's the kind of society we have built around us. You know? Because you don't know whether the, the person asking for drinking water may harm you. You know, that is, no, nobody wants to... <coughs> sorry. Nobody wants to suffer that risk of interaction with an unwanted person. So we are sort of isolating ourselves in our personal interests of safety and security. So that's also character. Okay. So I think all of you would have understood the concept of character as meta-competence. 
competence to use competence. Did the auto driver use his competence to stop what was happening? No. Instead, what did he do? He filmed the whole thing on his mobile and then circulated it via whatever uh, media he was uh, accessing. Now, now you can see a striking example of character. I believe many of the participants would be engineering teachers. I hope I'm not wrong. Okay. Maybe one or two are teachers of language or teachers of, uh, you know, uh, humanities and social sciences subjects. But since I believe and I hope I'm not wrong, please confirm this uh, with me. Uh, am I right in uh, inferring that a majority of the participants are engineering teachers? Am I yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, I'll give you one more example of character. And this is, uh, believe me, this is in one of the hotels I stayed in, in Trichy. Okay, or maybe Coimbatore. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I may not recall. But I take you back a few years. Here I am having a bath. And the water that's washing me is not moving towards the drain. Instead, it's moving towards the door. Okay. Not only that, the tap has been fixed at a level where... It's very difficult to slide in and slide out the bucket. Okay. Now, my dear friends, did the plumber or the supervisor who was supervising the project have the competence to correctly give the slope in the bathroom? I'm sure all of you agree. Yes. Now, is this a case where the water is not going to the drain, but is coming towards the door? Is it a case of lack of competence or lack of character? I think the answer should stare you in the face. This is a lack of character. Character does not mean only about lies and truth and, you know, honesty and integrity, etc. That's nonsense. Character has to be shown in professional work also. This is very, very, very important. There is no point in somebody saying that I am a person of good character. Why? Because I am a person of integrity. I don't tell lies. I avoid lies. I'm an honest taxpayer. That's one aspect of character. But what about your work? You can't produce shit and get away with it and say, I'm a person of character. Not allowed. Okay. So character also has to come in other contexts of our life. It's not just with respect to general state of mind in terms of truth and integrity, etc. or courage. I hope these examples convince you that character is a wider subject. And values are the bedrock of character. Because values guide our character. And that is what we are focusing on. And I'm going to dive into this. I've already given you terminologies that we can use to describe values. Okay. One, are you a person of integrity? Now, that is a value, a value to uphold integrity. Now, what is integrity? Integrity means there is consistency between what you think, what you speak, and what you do thought word and action the consistency is there overall overall out of 100 times if you are consistent as an ordinary human being i'm saying very simple human being out of 100 times if you show that consistency about 75 to 80 times well you're almost a saint in our world okay you're almost a saint you do it about 60 to 70 times or 75 times you're very good there are about 50 to 60 times you're probably average you know? That's what I have observed. So uh, it's something only we have to judge ourselves personally. And others can only give us feedback as true friends. So that is one thing. So do you have that integrity of thinking, speaking, and doing? Of course, there are other aspects of character. What are those aspects? It's not just to do with integrity alone. There's, it, it goes with another very interesting aspect of values called do you how much do you value peace now this is an important question because uh, when people ask me what do you mean by education i have given three questions to be answered uh, in response to the question of what is education and i'm going to share those three questions with you okay. what are those three questions number one Am I at peace with myself? This is an important question. 
are you at peace with yourself? And that's, you can call it as question 1A. And that's question 1B. Am I at peace with the rest of the world? Are you at peace with the rest of the world? That's an important question. Okay. And uh, this, these are big questions concerning whether we are educated or not. If I'm not be at peace with myself, to the extent I am at not at peace with myself, I'm not educated. To that extent. To the extent I'm not at peace with the rest of the world, I'm not educated. Okay. So the, the seeking of peace is an important dimension of human values. Okay. It's a it's I would call the most important among all values, it is the most important value. But I'll also supplement this. Can any human being, any simple, ordinary, normal, common, typical human being be at peace without dignity? It is not possible. Peace without dignity is just not possible. Please understand this. Peace has to be accompanied by dignity. You can never have peace of mind without dignity. It's not possible. And that marks uh, the human being as a special creature. You know, the idea of dignity is very special to the human creature. I tried to find out any other creature that marks the idea of dignity. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Even if there are examples that you can share, I'm sure they will be extreme examples where something has happened. Okay. So peace with dignity. So the question number one A, am I at peace with myself? Question number one B, am I at peace with the rest of the world? The rest of my world at least. Okay. Are you at peace with yourself? Are you at peace with the rest of the world around you? That means people whom you know and so on. Question number two A, am I holding, am I sustaining my grace, dignity and honor? Am I doing that? Question number two B, am I enabling or supporting others to uphold their grace, dignity and honor? Now this, these three words, grace, dignity and honor are very important words from the point of view of values. They're human values. Okay. How many times have you seen other creatures showing grace, dignity and honor? Honor may be in a different way. You know, there are examples in the animal world of honoring you know, and they have their own uh, way to express what they do. We don't know. We don't know is the correct answer. Okay. Maybe we don't have that reference frame. But animals do have certain sense of honor as can be evident in certain examples that we come about. Not extreme, but they are there. Okay. Now, this is very, very important. So, are we holding our grace, dignity and honor? Question number two B, are we supporting others to hold their grace, dignity and honor? We don't know. That only we can answer. Then comes the question, the, the question which I was referring to a little while ago, okay, which is question 3A. Am I struggling with myself every day, every moment to find fulfillment in what I do? Okay. You know, in, in Tamil, we use the word mana niraiva. In Hindi, we say barahu adil. Is your heart full? Do you feel fulfilled every day with what you do, with how you've lived and so on? Okay. Those are important questions. Okay. So, am I struggling is an important question because human life involves struggle. And I often share with friends that there is a beautiful Tamil film song from the film Autograph. I'm sure those of you have seen that film. I think it features Cheran and probably a, a Malayali actress, Gopika probably. I don't recall. Okay. It's a beautiful song because it contains wonderful lines for all of us. The lines in Tamil say, I'm going to translate for those, who have, those of you who may not know Tamil because I do see some names uh, which indicate that they may not know Tamil, okay, or probably do not know Tamil. Okay. So I will translate it. 
in tamil it says vaalvendral poradum porkalam it says vaalvu means in tamil vaalvu means in hindi you can translate it roughly as zindagi you know uh, or life in general human life endral means meaning vaalvu endral means life's meaning okay or zindagi ka matlab okay poradum poradum means struggle okay in tamil poradum english struggle okay i don't know what's a perfect uh, uh, hindi word for struggle you know um or effort i mean i and maybe my hindi isn't that good somebody can help me with the correct hindi word for struggle you know are you struggling you know okay and porkalame uh, porkalame means in tamil porkalame in english it means battleground you know yuddh ka bhumi in hindi you know yuddh bhumi if you want to put it that way so in in of course when we take some messages from our uh, hindu scriptures uh, you use the word dharma kshetra you know uh, we always say dharma kshetra kurukshetra you know it's like that remember the kurukshetra is inside each one of us huh? please don't forget that and here so that struggle are we struggling every day every moment to find fulfillment and what is that search for fulfillment go back to question 1a 1b 2a and 2b so 3a is am i struggling for fulfillment every day and every moment 3b is am i supporting or assisting others to struggle for their fulfillment if you answer these questions strongly with a strong yes well you're truly educated so my dear friends and colleagues from the world of education that is the qualifier for education now if you ask me whether i am educated i'll give you an answer for a reference point on the first question okay on the first question am i at peace with myself i'll give myself 35 marks so 65% i am not educated okay i'm telling you straight away i'm not educated on question 1b am i at peace with the rest of the world i'll give myself 40 marks so 60% i am not educated from that perspective okay this is where i am third i mean the second question am i holding my grace dignity and honor i'll give myself 50 marks okay so you know 50% i am not educated on that score why exactly how do i know that i am not holding my grace dignity and honor please understand this at a time when we reflect back on some of our actions when we introspect we will all be able to identify moments in our life when we should not have shot our head off we should not have become angry at somebody you know where we had shown our tempers very badly okay so to that extent i've lost my grace dignity and honor to that extent there have been many such moments i mean that includes the way i might have treated somebody in my family perhaps even my own mother or my father or my sisters or my wife or my children or my grandchildren okay whatever but the moment you lose that that wonderful state of peaceful stability well your grace dignity and honor are automatically cut automatically they are cut so basically a calm person is less likely to lose grace dignity and honor okay but here comes a question is calmness a guarantee of correctness my dear friends i'm going to share a bitter truth with you i have come across many 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 calm but cruel and crafty and cunning bloody rascals in my life okay i'm using strong language because i know what i'm talking about and they are satan's assistants you know i have no hesitation in calling them satan's assistants because they are people who deliberately you know betray your trust you know you trust somebody and they deliberately betray that trust for whatever reasons you know their own personal ends that brings us to another aspect of values do ends matter or means matter we'll talk about this also as we go along okay 
So calmness does not necessarily mean correctness. Please understand this. Being cool and calm. In fact, you would have seen many movies in which the dirty villain is very cool and calm. Correct? So cool and calm does not necessarily mean correct. Okay? Not necessary. Okay? Please understand this. So, uh, as I told you, you can, I'm sure all of you have examples of this. There are many cool and calm people you would have come across who are actually cruel and cunning and crafty, you know, or even cowardly. They're cowards very often. They don't have courage, you know. So, very often you have to strike a balance between being cool and calm and uh, showing uh, your emotions. Not showing emotions and being only stone-like is also not a wise thing to do in the world around. Yeah, you may not be harmed, but please understand, sometimes silence is not golden. Keeping quiet is not golden. There are examples in this also, okay, where keeping quiet was a karmic deed. I mean, bad karma. Many of you would have heard of the Mahabharata and the, the uh, episode concerning Dushasana attempting to disrobe Draupadi in the court of Dhritarashtra, okay. And there were people who kept quiet, okay, or at least seemingly keep quiet. Uh, seemingly they were quiet, according to the according to the uh, the story. You know? Now that is obviously a sin. Okay. We'll talk about this also because values should that we should uphold should also include the idea of ethics and morals, so upholding ethics and morals, because. Upholding ethics and morals is a value. Please understand, none of us can claim, even at the moment of our deaths, that we have lived a perfect life. None of us can claim that. I'm not sure even the finest among us can do that. You know? We can at best say that, okay, I've lived a dignified, good life. I had my rough edges, but it's time for me to go. And I'm happy at the way I lived. Okay, God, do I have another chance? You know, <laughs> that's all we can do. You can at best pray to God or whatever there is. I don't know whether there is a God. If somebody asks me, is there a God? I, my answer is, I don't know. I would like to believe. That's all. That's a different point. That I believe is a different point. Okay. I have my own mental models of who or what is God. That's for another day, not for today. Okay. Uh, I can only share with you, my model is, there's no separate God sitting up there somewhere, uh, you know, separately. I don't believe in that model. Okay. Fine. So, I was talking about being cool and calm, not losing your dignity and honor or grace. Okay. But again, please get back. Cool and calm, I'm underscoring this. I'm repeating this. Cool and calm does not imply automatically that the person is correct. On the contrary, the person may be cruel, may be cunning, may be crafty, may be a coward. Okay. So, be very, very careful about this cool and calm. In fact, in Tamil, there is a saying, Uma ura kedukum. Uma is the dumb guy, you know, the dumb person. Ur is place or location or maybe town or city or village. Kedukum means will spoil. So very often, Uma is only a metaphor. You know? It does, does not necessarily mean a dumb person. It means a person who generally doesn't speak when he or she is supposed to speak. And they are very dangerous people please. So whenever you're supposed to speak, if you don't uphold the value of courage, you know what you are. I don't need to tell you. You know what you are. Ultimately, we're answerable to ourselves. Ultimately, we're answerable to our conscience. Please understand this. That's where we are. You have to live with your conscience. Some of us may succeed in smothering our conscience for quite some time, maybe even a few years. But definitely, I can tell you, one day it will come up rising like a phoenix in front of you and will question, what the hell did you do? That will happen. It's better not to have that moment come to you. It's much better to avoid that moment. Okay. So that is where we are. Great. So I talked of education and values. I, I've termed some, I've used some words. You know, the commitment to peace is a value. Courage is a value. Uh, being a person of integrity is value. Showing, um, I mean, being truthful and honest, which are part of integrity, is a value. 
having gratitude is a value okay like this there are many human values in fact even in the animal world i've come across some peculiar videos where animals show gratitude some animals show gratitude naturally they are they are, they are the way they are dogs for example they are they are unquestioningly grateful to their masters or to their human friends i will use the word human friends rather than masters in fact i have enjoyed the company of dogs when i was much younger today my family doesn't have dogs at one point in time we had nine dogs at home two alsatians and the rest were pomeranians i've thoroughly enjoyed my company with those dogs they were beautiful creatures the point is do you have the emotional strength to bear the loss of a dog the bear bear the loss of something that trusted you unconditionally and that's where uh, that's also a human value how grateful you are how friendly your friendship is a human value you know uh, the 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 lack of being uh, what do you call the lack of being trustworthy is a negative human value you should be trustworthy that is also a human value like this there are many 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 human values that can make our world a better place a place where people can live with with a sense of peace a place where people can live with dignity grace and honor you know all these are possible and i want you to recognize that aspect of our lives can we make our lives better for us and for each other it's possible now where do we slip where do we slip where exactly do we slip we slip because we believe uh, wrongly that what is good for us will be good for the rest of the world you know we try to extend our persona or personalities into others now that's a mistake many of us commit and i have also committed a lot of that kind of a mistake we try to extend our personality into others we believe others will behave the way we do uh, that's quite stupid actually others don't behave the way we do they have their own frames of reference okay so we have to understand that actually okay so um, we have to be very careful with respect to how we hold ourselves how we conduct ourselves at this stage i also want to take you through a different model which will be useful for for you okay there are four contexts of life for any human being now what are these four contexts the first context is me alone or you alone you are alone nobody else is with you the second context is me at home you are at home with your family with your parents with your grandparents with your uncles aunts children grandchildren nieces nephews and even neighbors you are in your family you you are with people around you okay people whom you have related to very well during your life strongly that's why i said friends and neighbors also okay third context is me at work now you are in your professional setting and you are engaged in your work you are surrounded by your colleagues your peer group your superiors your subordinates your supply chain partners your business acquaintances and sometimes maybe people whom you don't know come to seek your assistance in some way or the other or to strike a relationship so me at work the last context the fourth and last context is me in public so i am i am in besanagar beach or i am in marina beach or i am in phoenix mall all i am in the madras central chennai central station now they call it dr mgr purachit talaiwar dr mgr central station yeah good mgr was a great man definitely in many many ways and many people are still fond of him um, I, i well i whatever little i know he he was in many ways a good person who who gave evidence that he cared for the poor now whether the evidence is good or bad i don't know that only the people who got the benefit should say how can i comment on that i can only see the evidence but i am also sensible enough to know that what you see what you hear kannal parpadum poi kadal ketpadum poi thira visaritha arivade me what you see may not be true 
what you hear may not be true that which is probably true is that which you really seek out the truth for you know now that's a very very important human value huh? that is the human value of investigation not jumping to conclusions not making i mean hasty inferences this is also a human value and it's a universal human value not being impulsive is a human value please understand this okay so i i'm bringing all these terminologies only because ordinarily when we talk of human values we confine to morals ethics and so on i want to take you through the world we live in where it's not just morals and ethics but to do with our behavior normal behavior you know yeah uh, like i said are you basically calm you know and 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 peaceful you know not cruel and uh, uh, crafty and cunning and being a coward not that way okay are you basically calm in a good manner do you have courage with calmness these are also human values there are many like that you know so i talked of the four contexts of human life so that you understand that these values have to be shown have to be revealed in the four contexts of life i hope you got it. so can you reveal the human value when you are alone nobody is watching you is it true that nobody is watching you the answer is no why cuz damn it you are conscious you are watching yourself that's why i talked of conscience some time ago don't don't ever deny this fact the truth that you are observing yourself thank you professor ramu yeah no not at all is a correct answer thank you i love that interaction i think i would i would plead with any of you to come on chat and uh, share your your views that would be great i'm sure we'll have a lot of fun in this session that way okay so please do that feel free use the chat you know or even unmute and and speak that will be great if you do that thank you sir yeah not at all you are observing yourself how can anybody deny that they are <laughs> observing themselves it's just not possible okay the question is what do you do beyond your observing yourself here comes another truth which i learned from my wife okay and she learned from a discourse in a temple so she told me she went to some discourse in a temple and so wonderful truth wonderful truth because it guides our values and what she shared with me about what the other person shared in the discourse is by the way this is also a human value to be consistent to cite somebody when you should cite in the academic world you know all sorts of nonsense happens you don't give a correct reference in your research papers you don't cite somebody because you don't like them you know sometimes we don't even cite our own uh, good friends who are colleagues also why because we don't want the uh, the credit to go partially to them you know no that's not a good value you know that's not a good value in academics i mean there are many things i'll talk about in, in human values this is also one okay so what was that thought apparently that person who gave the discourse had shared with the audience that human beings cannot cannot control at all it is impossible for a human being to control the rise of a thought in his or her mind i hope this you got it nobody has the control of a rise of a thought a thought will come like that in tamil we use the word manam oru kurangu you know uh, uh, in english it translates to mind is a monkey okay now yeah, we all know our minds you know and i'm sure that statement is true we all know how much our mind jumps from moment to moment you know how much so you cannot control the rise of a thought but that person had also shared with his audience uh, it was a he okay he, uh, with his audience that uh, you cannot control the rise of a thought in your mind but you can control the continuation of the thought in your mind whether you want to continue with the thought or cut it off is in your deliberate action in your mind it's that control is it is given to you do you want to control the thought or not now this is where i think strong christianity comes in strongly fortunately i studied in roman catholic schools right from lkg upwards you know now i am very proud to say i i studied my lkg and ukg in in a school called our ladies convent later uh, i mean also the higher school is known as holy angels 
in Tinagar in, in Madras. I was born and brought up in Madras. Okay. And I'm very happy to share with you. The lady may not remember now. Indra Nui of Pepsi and I were classmates up till third standard. I mean, they don't trust boys after third standard. So we had to leave the school and go to a boys school after that. Okay. So I, I went to St. Bede's High School. So right through I've been in, in Roman Catholic schools. And I worshipped in church. I go and kneel in front of Lord Jesus and Mother Mary. I pray my heart out. By the way, I do wear Vibhuti also. Because for me, religion is, a, is something that we idiotic human beings have built. You know, It's something beyond. That's also a human value. What do you do with religion? Am I a rabid Hindu? No, I'm not. You want me to go to mosque? Yes, I will go. Because for me, that universal spirit is everywhere. You know, there is no point in saying in Tamil they say, that means uh, it's quoted for Lord Narasimha, for those of you who don't know Tamil. So, you know the story of Prahlada and Hiranyakashipu and the Narasimha avatar, you know, where uh, Narasimha, the, the, the god, I mean the god Narasimha, according to the, the, the mythology, you know, he comes out of the breaking out of the pillar and, and uh, protects his, his bhakta, you know, uh, Prahlada, the, the small boy, you know. So in Tamil we say Thunilamirpar. That means he will be that spirit is there in the pillar, Thurumbilamirpar. That spirit is there even in the small speck of dust, you know, if you want to refer to that. So it's a spirit that pervades the universe. So if we hold a value that God resides only in a Vishnu temple or a Shiva temple, we are idiots. That's all I can say. We are deliberate uh, <laughs> idiots. I think we have to come out of this frame of mind. You know, let's not take religion too far into a difficult territory. That's also a value. I uphold that value because I believe the spirit is everywhere. And that, when you take that belief, please understand, when you take that belief, uh, it, it definitely helps you in those three questions. Am I at peace with myself? Am I at peace with the rest of the world? Am I holding my grace, dignity and honor? Am I supporting others hold their grace, dignity and honor? Am I struggling for fulfillment? All the three questions, you will be assisted by that value system. This is my value system. Does it mean that you will always be comfortable in life? No. I am a living, good, bad example of the untruth in that statement. Just because you uphold that universal value doesn't mean you suddenly become a saint and nobody will harm you. In fact, you, you become more vulnerable. Please understand this. So vulnerability is a very important aspect. In fact, being a professor of management, I can share with you something interesting. There's a lot of literature on leadership, which also talks of the vulnerability of leadership. You know, very often great leaders are also vulnerable people. Don't forget, Mahatma Gandhi was vulnerable. It's not okay. He became a Mahatma for a different reason. We'll come to that again. I always share that Mahatma Gandhi or Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi became Mahatma Gandhi more because of Kasturba Gandhi. Okay, this very few people recognize. <laughs> why why you discount the wife you know you discount the woman i mean this shows how stupid males can be you know we are naturally stupid that way but i can't help it you know? we have to come out of that okay we have to come out of that anyway that apart i told you it's a value that you uphold can you uphold that value in your lives you know? can you see that universal spirit everywhere okay why because only then you can start struggling with yourself okay so this is where uh, we come from. And uh, please understand, I started all this because I was referring to Christianity and Roman Catholic schools. Okay, I've learned some wonderful lessons in those schools. You know, very, very fine lessons. I've made very good friends in, those, uh, in, in, in my schools. And I've cherished my friendship, everything. Please understand, being friendly is a human value. Okay. Here, I want to share something with you. You know, when I curse somebody out of anger or when I, when I abuse somebody out of anger, I can assure you, I will never tell that the person is a pig or a dog or a snake. You know why? Because all those three animals are superior to human beings who don't show character. I want you to understand this. So we don't want to keep the pig and the dog and the snake in an exalted position. They are far superior to a Satan's assistant any day. Please understand this. Dogs or pigs or snakes don't betray. They 
they display consistent behavior inconsistent behavior only comes from this human creature which can descend into hell you know very not very uh, difficult it's very easy okay so this is a very very important thing and i hope that lesson which i shared a little while ago is useful to you you cannot control the rise of a thought in your mind but you can control the continuation of the thought in your mind okay use your powers use your powers and that is where you become a better person okay i was also telling you this because when you start becoming a better person please note you will become more vulnerable this is life but the point is this you can go to sleep with a clean conscience every day does it mean you allow others to cheat you no not at all you can still be smart you can still be shrewd in a positive way okay you need not harm somebody else that's all i'm saying don't have intentions and here i want to make another point clear this is a guidance that my father has given me and i think it was very very correct he says pure thoughts soft truthful words clean heart move on this was his teaching to me okay pure thoughts ultimately we are all creatures with thoughts pure thoughts i just told you you cannot control the rise of a thought but you can control what comes to your mind because ultimately don't forget we are all creatures subject to a certain phenomenon universal phenomenon called temptation okay and we can yield to temptation and that also signifies your values if i hold the value of conviction in my truths that's a value conviction in my truths is a value if i hold that value very dear to me i will not continue with that temptation i hope you got it. i will not continue with that temptation this is very very important okay so be very careful with your thoughts because i i gave you that that clue you cannot control the rise but you can control the continuation of thought now that's a very important thing in the practice of the more noble values in our lives many of which i have named during my interaction with you uh, uh, as of now okay uh, professor murugan i thought i'll leave some time for interactions and questions and answers so I've, uh, we have about approximately we have about uh, 15 minutes is that okay uh, uh, yes sir okay with this? yeah i'll be very happy to respond to to questions or comments or observations or suggestions from our friends who are there virtually in fact i want to joke with you a little bit i don't know which idiot invented the term physical i mean social distancing so my dear friends that person is an idiot i'll tell you why right now are we socially distanced here is a question to you right now are we socially distanced we are not we are physically distanced i think the correct term is physical distance okay and another person i don't know who started this online and offline classes what do you mean offline classes it is in person classes for heaven's sake so you can have an online or virtual class or interaction and an in person interaction it's not offline so sometimes we make wrong use of words you know of course we carry the meaning we all of us understand and somebody says social distancing you understand the meaning i am not talking of meaning remember we are all in education so precision of terminology is very important okay so attempt to use precision is also a value is a human value i hope you got it they have to attempt to be precise in your words so at least please do take my clue from now on don't refer to offline classes but refer to in person classes that makes correct sense actually okay and similarly try to say physical distancing not social distancing the truth is right now we are not socially distanced please understand that uh, we are close socially that's why we are interacting yeah there was a question what was that please uh, will it be possible to teach values that's a that's a very good question from a teacher okay well uh, professor ramu if i may use the term ramu uh well i'm not sure whether i can teach values but 
remember we we say we can we can definitely impart competencies and teach competencies but we always build the character please understand this we develop character we build the character that means does it involve teaching not necessarily but we can make people aware of certain human values and try to sensitize them and hope that they will become more human than they are that is what you can do okay that is the only thing we can do any other question please yeah. i'm happy that uh, you're all here you've listened to me i hope i was making sense to you in your lives i will uh, just try to underscore one thing just because you're a good person doesn't make you everybody uh, uh, as somebody whom everybody will like not at all true today being good is considered bad i hope you got it okay yes we are we have we have changed the world we have changed the world and i am sharing some bitter truths with you okay direct personal experience yes. today okay. in our world whistle blowers are more dangerous than the violators when you become a whistle blower when you point to somebody who is doing wrong the person who is doing wrong is celebrated but you who are pointing out to what is wrong become the villain you become the villain now that's the kind of stupid world we have built you know so it's very difficult to talk about values in tamil we say if somebody talks about values you say poraka theriyadam you know uru valagam puriyadam in hindi poraka theriyadam means are ye jeene ka layak nahi hai that's what you say in hindi in english you say this guy doesn't know how to live but that's a challenge you know how do we make the world a better place uh, and uh, uh, how do we make life more comfortable for each other is it possible yes it is possible okay is it difficult very difficult can we do it i'm not going to answer the question can we should do it okay so uh, professor yes please uh, yeah, sure uh can you tell me some simple techniques to control our mind based on your experience okay uh uh is it professor ramu who asked the question uh is it professor ramu who asked the question please no sir murugan professor murugan oh professor murugan asked the question uh, yes. okay great uh well uh, i think i can attempt to give you an answer professor murgan i'm not sure whether that's the perfect answer yes yes what i have learned what i have learned is there are certain meditative practices and yogic practices which help a person to gain better control over the mind please understand even in our own mythology we have the famous story or the infamous story of vishwamitra falling for menaka yes and giving birth to shakuntala vishwamitra succumbed to temptation isn't it are you understanding yes sir yes. so even the brahma rishi succumbed to temptation we are human beings okay so we should be very very careful but we can become better that was my point professor we yes, can sir. gain we can be more confident in dealing with ourselves <laughs> but sometimes things can go off the handle you know okay, they can fly off the handle yeah how do we inculcate etiquettes in students coming from different backgrounds yeah like i told you uh, reddy garu i think it is by dr seelam narsimha reddy reddy garu the i think the basic idea is to first make them aware of these values and the value of these values in our lives you know how do they help us in various aspects of life like i told you no help people understand that if people are trustworthy and truthful it is it's a more peaceful world than otherwise i hope you got it you know we will be living in a more peaceful world imagine if india and pakistan and china trust each other and are trustworthy we will have a lot of peace we don't need to spend millions and millions of rupees and dollars and remimbi or whatever into our defense and offense mechanisms that shows how stupid human creatures are the very fact that you have established armies shows how stupid you are you don't need that i hope you understand we don't need that the point is we we do that because the other party seems untrustworthy and we don't be we are not willing to trust them and sometimes 
stupidly the other party keeps on giving evidence that they are not trustworthy now what do you do what do you do very difficult then you build your defenses which is fair enough you can't help it and don't forget reddy garu don't forget according to our mythology a war was fought for was fought for long term peace the entire story of the mahabharata war a very bitter absolutely disastrous war very very i mean tragic war was fought for long term peace okay and uh, yeah perhaps learn and observe by parental guidance yes parents have to show today i'm not sure how many parents really guide their children properly you know because sometimes it could be very difficult sometimes parents set a wrong example okay and uh, that's difficult and you have to be careful you can't have a, a child which is observing a parent to say something and do something else now <laughs> actually uh, ramu sir i have come across many people who apparently think something say something else and then do something else absolutely unpredictable rascals you know? <laughs> how do you how do you deal with such situations tell me how do you deal with such people yeah it's true it's true at least we can be uh, we can avoid that kind of thing at a personal level no that is the point so you need great inner strength to tolerate nonsense you need great inner strength that has to be developed and built you know like we say in college yeah you must have the ability to take a lot of shit or as is put in uh, the former chief minister annadurai stum edayum thangum idayam you know that means a heart that can withstand anything you know so you need something like that okay any other questions please uh, ah yeah. professor uh, good morning good morning professor this is lewis uh, yeah. as a professor how we can uh, insist our children sir as as we are parents how yeah. we can insist the uh, moral values of our life to our children and we have to grow up students how it is uh, how we can uh, into our uh, students our, our children in the moral values see uh, one thing has already been pointed out is uh, see we have to be an example that's very very important if you are not an example then your communication falters automatically yes. and remember children are sharp they observe what's happening yes are you yes, understand sir. i have i have twin grandchildren a boy and a girl who are obviously forming values at this stage of their life they are about 7 and 1/2 years old and they've begun observing the world around them are you understanding yes, yes sir and i can observe that they've begun observing you know so when their mother or father that's uh, their mother is my daughter and the father they behave in a particular way they're observing they're assimilating that are you understanding and they're yes, forming sir. their mental models and value systems so being an a good, an example is very very important okay see uh, another thing uh, uh lewis please. mr lewis yes, sir, another sir. thing is there's no guarantee lewis that just because you we have properly everything will be okay i'll yes, tell sir. you another reason for this if you have children do you agree at least 8 hours of the day they are not with you yes sir sir now what the hell do you do <laughs> you tell me <laughs> how can you control what's happening in the 8 hours they are not with you Yes, in fact your our children may be going through a very contradictory experience learning yes. experience you don't know what's happening in school you cannot yes. be with them physically all the eight hours or whatever it is yes, at the time they travel and they are observing the world so our children and as they grow into their adulthood are also a product of nature and nurture nature is the genes that you and your wife passed on to them yes sir nurture is what how you bring them up you know yes, yes, and uh, how the rest of the world is also teaching them so we cannot control the rest of the world we can only make use of the time they are with us fortunately i i am sure i and my wife are very happy with our two daughters i think we brought up brought them up and they are not identical please understand my second daughter is more street smart my first daughter is very passionate in what she does so their character is different you know like we say in tamil anju varalum onnu illa ore kai da ana five fingers are not they don't resemble each other no? yes sir even twins are not the same i can assure you they have different characters you know 
even identical twins have different characters yes yes brother so to some extent only we can have a, a certain degree of influence uh, lewis to some extent and then place the rest of trust in the universal spirit that's all yes. have you done an honest job is the question yes as a parent <laughs> yeah that is very very critical we can't expect to uh, not do an honest job and expect magic to happen in our children that's not possible thank you professor i don't think really punishment is the way to to handle things you know there are soft punishments also i often joke you know one of the finest weapons that india can develop in a, for its defense system in, in a punishment sense you know but in a positive sense is you have a you have an electronic device which can create of that particular frequency and directed at a particular location where when you direct that that electronic signal to a particular location everybody within a particular radius will go to sleep for the amount of time that you set in your machine how do you like that so <laughs> i hope you got this huh? yes, i press the button in chennai and say lahore or rawalpindi or beijing people within a radius of 100 kilometers go to sleep for 45 minutes and i hope you agree it's a non violent weapon at least physically yes it's mentally a violent weapon please understand this yes yes brother because you are intruding the mind of a person so it is violent but it is physically non violent i am telling you yes. dave lewis china and pakistan will be shit scared of us if we have such a weapon because yes. you don't know what the hell you can do in those 45 minutes 45 minutes yes but, brother <laughs> and i'm sure such a weapon is possible i hope those guys don't do it on us it's a harmless weapon mistress <laughs> yeah physically harmless physically harmless so there are such weapons in human interactions also are you yes. understand you don't harm people physically but you can be careful yes sir thank you professor any anybody else please Morgan sir, anybody else? Yes, uh, I think uh, there is no question in the chat box, sir. Yeah, sure. Well, I am available. I would request you, Morgan sir, to share my mobile number and email with all the participants. Sure, sir. I'd be sir. happy to offer my uh, my thoughts and my whatever knowledge and experience I've gone through. I'm, I'm willing to share. Of course, I cannot guarantee that they will. bring you success but i can sort of be confident that you are likely to become a better person in that sense yes i'm sure you are all very good people already uh, but as we always say as teachers there's no end to improvement correct murugan sir you can yes. always keep improving you know that's all so we have to sharpen our mind and else day by day yes. and uh, we are recording your session professor yeah very uh, good if you can share it on we will send uh, to the participants yeah now you can also share it with me uh, yes sure sir. sure thank sir. you i was not sure whether you were recording i wasn't sure so that's thank you very much sir thanks sir <clears throat> so we had uh, universal human values by dr elis ganesh sir retired professor of iit madras so we have come to the end of session 1 day 2 next we'll have uh, our session at 11 am sharp that will that will be a session 2 of day 1 it will be on national education policy 2020 by dr shekhar appa b malur professor and chairman university bt the college of engineering karnataka so let us join back at 11 am again on the same link thank you all for joining